How's it going my truant people? Dr. Slacking the Slacking Doctor back with week 6 of the APA Academy and this week your Bolan Bovines are taking on uh, It's Whatever and his Sacramento Nido Kings I believe. Um, and this week you may notice I'm in the same clothes I was in last week. The fan is still going behind me. I'm recording it the same day. I'm recording it the same day. Uh, breaking the fourth wall here. I'm taking a week off of Discord and Mons next week. Uh, if you guys are in leagues with me, you will already know this. If you're not, then you won't. But I'm taking a, a week off Discord and Mons and stuff because I got a lot going on and stuff. So I'm just not going to be online at all. So I'm recording all these in advance, editing them all in advance and getting them up in advance. So that's that out of the way. Uh, this week, going into this week, we are currently sitting at a record of 2 and 3, and I believe it is sitting either at a record of 3 and 2 or 2 and 3. So, similar record. I think 2 and 3 and 2. I think he's won 3 on the bounce. So, whereas we've just lost 3 in a row going into this week, he's just won 3 in a row going into this week. So, definitely the informed team in the division against the out form team in the division, but uh, or in the league, I should say, but that's, that's fine. Um... First set, first set that we're bringing out. In fact, no, before I do that, above my head, the timestamp will appear for uh, the battle. If you want to skip ahead to the battle, I keep forgetting to do this stuff. Uh, and I want to give out my thank yous to my front office. Uh, I believe Stromful helped me mock this week. And I believe Aquarius also helped me mock this week. I'm trying to remember what sets they brought to think whether they did. Yeah, they did. They definitely did. So yeah, shout out to Stromful and Aquarius in particular. Those two guys have been giving me mocks like crazy recently. Um, but uh, a huge shout out to them. Very, very grateful. Um, Shout out to Panther2 for recording this battle for me, and a huge thank you to Diet Tight once again for joining the team. That man is the MVP for me right now. So, let's let's talk about the sets that we're bringing in and what my opponent has. So, uh, somewhere above my head, I don't know how I'm doing this again because the, the, the dock has changed, but my opponent's team will be appearing somewhere above my head. Uh, he has the Latios, the Zara Aura, the Florgius, the Heatran, the Nidoking, the Gyarados, the Porygon 2, the Alolan Persian, the Hitmontop, the Bear Tick, and the Mega Obama Snow. So, threats on my opponent's team. Latios is kind of a threat, but... It's got a bit of a weird match because me. I have double fighting types which make us a psychic type great, but I also have like Scissor and uh, Megatar that can pursue trap it, which makes psychic types kind of bad. So my team is really weird against psychic types. Uh, then the Zero Aura definitely a huge threat. I need to deal with that thing. That thing that speeds my whole team, and it's just a massive problem for me to deal with. Uh, my ground type is pretty crappy in uh, Golurk, so we're gonna have to deal with that Zero Aura one way or another. Florgus, we showed in the first two weeks how good Florgus can be, so we're gonna have to watch out for that thing. Uh, Tran is pretty scary. Nido King's pretty scary. Gyarados is pretty scary. Then P2 can be hard to break. Persian is an effective pivot. Hit him on top is pretty balls in my opinion, but it is actually a fantastic Mega Tyranitar check. Uh, Bear Tick and a Bomber Snow, I never see coming here. Uh, I don't think Snow has any kind of matchup against me, especially with my Mega Tar and stuff. Like, I just don't think it has a matchup. So, uh, with that in mind, those two pretty much just cross them off. We didn't prep for them, they're not coming. Uh, so, everything else, we kind of got a break and check. It's a weird draft because it's like got two really. It's got one really defense, two really defensive ones, I guess, in P2 and Floor, just so you got break. Heatran can be a little bit difficult to break too, but then the rest is just like really scary offense. So, pretty nice draft, here, in my opinion. Regardless, the first one on our team that we are bringing our round one pick once again, of course, Infinite, Kieran Black. He's here, he's back. This time we're bringing a Mago Berry set, rocking the substitute once again. Uh, quite a lot of speed, a little bit of offense, quite a lot of bulk on this set. Um, and basically this thing can like two hit KO floor just always with an iron head unless it's Baberry Berry of course uh, Where you can like two hit KO pretty much everything else with Dragon Claw apart from like Intimidate Gyarados But we can deal with that in other ways Earth Power uh, is there for things like the Heatran that can take the other two moves of course um, And substitute like I say is because basically this thing can come in if it comes in on rocks uh, Gets 25% uh, off it comes in takes a substitute gets 25% off it We're almost certainly gonna proc our Mago Berry at some point in the game and it just gives this thing a full second lead of life it worked so well at mox like this thing was so obnoxious for people to deal with really really fun set um the mago berry if you don't know is a super berry that gives you 50 percent of your health back so yeah this is our primary breaker against my opponent's team uh second mod on the squad once again red the scissor she's back uh this week she's got an ocker berry uh so really more of i guess kind of a supportive set really really fat a lot of hp in this build and then max attack adamant uh basically being able to come in on the latios uh, take anyone hit into a hidden power fire if it is being text on there, which I think it probably will be. I think it'd be hidden power fire for us, uh, for our scissor, and then surf for our Mega Tyranitar. Uh, basically, be able to take that and hit it with the pursuit if it stays in, followed by a bullet punch, which will KO it. Um, or if they just raw switch out because they haven't taken the hidden power fire, then we can just pursuit trap that. But Latios, just like last week, pursuit trapping is pretty nice. Why do I want to trap the Latios? Because uh, it's kind of obnoxious for the Kieran Black being able to always come in and revenge kill it. Uh, and it is also kind of annoying for the next one on the team, 
U turn on there is for momentum and stuff. Of course, knock off for that P2. And the next one on the team is Hodgehek, the Shaman, making the debut on the channel. Uh, this is our kind of uh, second breaker slash first win con. Don't know exactly how I'll play it in the battle, but. If I can get a Tailwind up and just sweep my opponent, I'll do that. If I can't, I can get a Tailwind up and break my opponent, I'll do that. With the Grassium ZC Flare, we can hit things like the Gyarados really, really hard. Um, even the Floor just decently hard. Uh, Earth Power's on there, of course, for the Zero Aura, but also prim primarily the Heatran. Uh, and Dazzling Gleam, as I say, is to hit that Latios, but that's why I kind of want Latios going as early as possible, uh, because like Scarf Latios could be a threat, um, and Latios is decently fat, so being able to Dazzling Gleam it will do a bit, but because Shaman isn't crazy strong and we're not setting up its attack, we definitely need to chip things down for this thing to do the most possible work it can. Next up on the team, we have Roton Wash Bosch. Uh, making the debut on the channel as well. Well, not making the debut, making the debut on Wi-Fi on the channel. This is a super, super speedy kind of bulky set. We have quite a lot of HP uh, and a, a medium amount of defense and then max speed timid so that we can outspeed the Nido King always. Uh, I know uh, Stromful felt that this speed was unnecessary. Uh, I said stick with it even after our conversation just because I felt that it was needed. I always wanted to make sure I outsped that Nido King. Uh, Discharge Hydro Pump, Defog Volt Switch, pretty standard. Keeps rocks off the field if we want them off the field, which we may do. We'll see how it plays out, really. Um, Aya Papa Berry on there for longevity of course uh, this thing is our primary uh, Gyarados check we might have to scout for Z on the Gyarados, but other than that, this thing should wall Gyarados pretty, pretty nicely. Next up, we have Gene. Gene the Gardevoir, once again, rocking that Choice Scarf. Two weeks in a row, we've bought Choice Scarf Gardevoir. It did work last week. I think it can do work again this week. Basically, being able to outspeed the Salamence if they're not speed creeping a Scarf Gardevoir. Uh, same with the Nido King as well, because we basically tried to look at the team what they would want to speed creep other than Gardevoir, and if they got, like, greedy with the creep, uh, then we've speed crept that. So, it's hard to say for sure. They should always speed creep uh, my Gardevoir, but, you know, if they want to go with Adamant, which I was seeing a lot in Mox a lot of adamant Gyarados then I will outspeed them and be able to Thunderbolt them so that's really really nice uh, like I say this is a good revenge killer to plus one Gyarados in that sense and also once again the Trace being able to Trace the Intimidate is pretty nice too just like last week with the Salamence uh, Hidden Power Ground is on there so that we can hit the Zero Aura and the um... oh crap this set's wrong Oh my goodness. No, no, it's not wrong. It is right. Uh, ignore me. I don't know if the set you're seeing on your screen is correct. Uh, but it's, if you have Wish as the fourth move, it shouldn't be Wish. It should be Trick. So I'm hoping I didn't mess that up on the graphics as well. Because I uh, was scouting how much PP Wish had in the battle, I believe. Um, so that's why that was on there. Foolishness. So it should be Trick. If it doesn't say Trick as the fourth move, it is Trick. Uh, this was recommended by Stromfall originally. I had uh, Psychic, I believe, or Psy Shock for the Nido King. Uh, but he was like, no, bring Trick for the P2, it's more useful, and I, in the end, agreed. Wasn't sure about it, but in the end, agreed. Um, so yeah, this thing, once again, can be really, really useful with Trace, being able to Trace Plasma Fists from Zero or If we can get that in on a Plasma Fist, we then have Speed with the Scarf and be able to pick it off, something like that. Hidden Power Ground, if we want to read the Heatran coming in, we can do a big chunk to that. Last one on the team is our Rocker, Barney, the Mega Tyranitar. I've never really used Mega Tyranitar before. In fact, I don't think I've used it at all. Uh, I once inherited a draft that had it and traded it away because I thought it was bad back then, but this was very early in my draft career. Now, I'm a big fan of this Mon. Uh, we have no attack investment. This is just fully defensive. Um, nearly max HP, a lot of defense, a lot of speed as well, uh, with a jolly nature. Basically, being able to sp outspeed something on this team, I honestly can't tell you what. I can't quite recall. Uh, but regardless, we can Stone Edge and Earthquake through most of his team. Edgequake is pretty nice against my opponent. Uh, the hit on top seems like the primary check, so being able to Toxic that would be really, really nice. Uh, and if we can get Rocks up, we can force that thing to always Rapid Spin, which gives us free switches into things like Gene that then apply offensive pressure. So that's the kind of idea here is to uh, use the Hitmon top and abuse its passivity if it's always going for rapid spin to get in my more offensive ones like Kira or Gene. So that's the idea of the team. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, but without wasting any more of your time, let's jump into the battle. So here we are in the battle, guys, and you can see the six that my opponent decided to bring as we have to face the Alolan Persian, the Heatran, the Zero Aura, the Florges, the Gyarados, and the uh, Hitmon top. And uh, looking at the teams, I felt like Shaman did pretty well here, actually. If we could chip down the floor, just especially, I felt like Shaman did really, really well. Um, so I'm really going to be looking to use Kiram to the best of my abilities. I th that's the primary lure to kind of get in floor just and break it. Um, and then once that goes down, I'm looking at it and I'm looking like, okay, Sea Flare will hit the Persian really, really hard. Um, it's not that specially bulky. Uh, it, Earth Power will obviously do so much to the Heat Chain if we can get a bit of chip on that. Uh, Earth Power slash Sea Flare will do quite a lot to the Zero Aura. Um, the Z Sea Flare will be able to take out the Gyarados on most spreads. Um, and everything will hit the. Um, Hit on top of it's not AV, but really I want to chip down the uh, hit on top because I do think it's likely to be AV. And I want to chip down the Florges, and then with those two things chipped down, I'm looking at 
Shaman. I'm like, okay, this thing looks great against this team. It has a fantastic matchup. Uh, similarly, Scarf, Guard of Blood does look pretty decent, but I do have to chip down this Heatran especially. Uh, and he does have the Floor as well. So with that in mind, I want to get rid of Floor just as early as possible to kind of free up my Guard of War especially. Um, but also, as I say, to support the Shaman too. So I'm going to lead off with Kieran Black with that in mind. And this is really itching my ear for some reason. I don't know why that's really itching my ear, but there we go. That's better. Um... So we're going to lead off with Kieran Black. It leads well against like just everything on his team. Like just nothing well leads well against it. So and with the Mago Berry, like we're going to be able to take hits from things and get our uh, HP back as well. So that's pretty nice. He decides to lead off with the Persian and I'm like, I'm just going to sub. I think he's going to parking shell. I'm just going to sub down. Give me this sub. And he actually goes for the foul play. Now because we're not fully offensive and we are pretty fat, uh, we don't take too much from that. We take less than 50% from that, which is really nice. And then we're able to sub down. Now unfortunately this doesn't quite put us in our Mago Berry range, but nah, it's not the end of the world because we can still come in on rocks or something. Here I predict him to go for the taunt basically because this looks like sub roost Kirim and I don't think he wants me to be able to roost on him. So I'm just going to roll Dragon Claw. Uh, I did consider subbing again. That's why I say it's like a prediction because if I had thought he was going to go for foul play, arguably I could have subbed again to pop my berry. But I was like, I don't think that's worth. I think uh, on the basis that he might taunt, I might safe play is always just a Dragon Claw and get damage off. Uh, I do double Dragon Claw here, uh, feeling that he might just want to break my sub with a foul play. I consider going for the Iron Head read here of the floor just coming in. But I was like, I don't need to be that aggressive. It's turn like three. Like he, he might just want to foul play to get rid of my sub. Um, so I didn't iron head. I just just roll dragon claw. Uh, as the floor just does come out, and now I'm like, okay, now I'll iron head, and I'm guaranteed to get a lot of chip off. Unfortunately, at minus one, we're not going to two hit KO. You can see if we weren't minus one, we would have two hit KO, uh, which was the idea of the build. But that's that's the the beauty of parting shot. Here he's going to moon blast, uh, and of course break our substitute. And I was like, okay, I don't think he will predict me to stay in. I think he will predict me to go out, and I think he'll go for a wish. Regardless, I know I'm faster, so actually subbing down again here is a no drawback play, because even if he moon blasts again, uh, I still get my health back with my Mago Berry, and I'm still then at 50% later on in the battle. Whereas, uh, if I switch out, I, I wouldn't be. I'd be down at the 27%. I'd have to come in on rocks to get my, my berry activated or sub down on something that I'm faster than later in the game. But uh, I do get the prediction correct, and he does just go for the wish there, I think, suspect, uh, expecting me to go out. Which then means that my Kirim is once again behind a sub, and we're able to just iron head there. Uh, and we actually get a, a pretty nice flinch there, I won't lie, uh, which basically stops him from moon blasting and breaking my sub. Uh, it isn't hugely consequential, I guess. Um, but it, it definitely early game is not nice to get a flinch. But I mean, uh, this is what our th that's our fourth iron head or third iron head against him. So it's one of those things where when you're sitting in against iron heads, one or one or two of them are going to flinch you eventually, I guess. Um, but regardless, we're in a pretty weird position now where we just keep spamming iron head, and there's really no reason not to. Um, I know that I'm not going to kill this floor just without like some serious flinch or crit hacks. But regardless, I can get it as low as I possibly can, and then once it's low, I can start playing around with other things. Uh, and he is really running the risk of flinch and crit hacks all the time that he's kind of staying in here. It's very dangerous. I know this from using floor just myself earlier in the season. Uh, it can be very, very dangerous just to sit in like this. If you think about the amount of times we got confused by that taunt T in, in week two, for example. Uh, here he goes for the wish, and I'm like, okay, there's no reason for him to iron head again. Yes, he might just protect. But he actually chooses to pass this wish into the uh, Persian, which on paper is a really good play. Like, I, I completely understand this play. It's really nice because we're obviously not going to KO this with Iron Head had we gone for the Dragon Claw there on the read. We may have done. There was no real reason to. Uh, like I say, had we, like, crit or something with the Iron Head, that was always my best play on the floor. Just, um... But for us, actually, this is perfectly fine because this means the floor just is back down at a low range of health. Now, here I actually expect him to want a parting shot again. So I just go for the Iron Head. It might seem weird because Dragon Claw would have done more to this Persian, but that's exactly why I don't think he'll stay in a foul play. He wants to preserve this Persian. He's already shown me that earlier in the game by not just staying in and foul playing earlier. So unlike last time where I didn't have the bottle to click Iron Head, this time I most certainly do. So I'm just going to Iron Head double here. And it's going to basically mean that the floor just now cannot stay in and wish on me, which is crucial. That's really what we wanted to see there. So this thing basically uh, either has to give me, the, he has to either give me this thing or he has to go back into the Persian and take yet more damage on the Persian and then either parting shot or foul play around. And regardless, we're getting exactly what we wanted, uh, which is breaking through the floor, just putting that thing down at like 20% and putting this thing down decently low as well. It's at like, what, 60% now? So uh, we're just going to fire off the Dragon Claw here because I don't think he ever parking shots into Floor just again. And even if he does, Iron Head may well KO the Floor just from the range it's at, even at like minus three. So I'm just going to Dragon Claw because I feel like I just want to get as much damage off on this thing as possible. Obviously, Terra Vault goes through Fur Coat, so it does still do a lot, even at minus two. That still does what? I don't know, 40% maybe. Uh, so after the lefties, he's back at maybe 45% here. 
And that's really, really nice. It basically means it's less of a good switch into Tyranitar, which I'm now going to just go hard out into. Um, feeling that he may just go for the taunt or something like that. That isn't the end of the world. Um, at worst, he might just foul play again, and that won't really do too much. But he actually goes for the Toxic, which is, is worse than foul play. Uh, definitely isn't ideal. Um, good play by him. I can see why he uh, just wanted to Toxic the Kirim, because even if we, like, drag Lord or sub there, uh, it would have been a decent enough play by him. So... I can fully understand that. I kind of wish I'd stayed in and Dragon Clawed with hindsight, but that's the way it goes. Getting this thing poisoned isn't the end of the world because Barney is here for a good time, not a long time, as they say, so it's fine. Uh, he still doesn't switch into this thing overly well, so I'm actually just going to go for Stealth Rocks here, expecting him to just go hard into Hitmontop, um, and then I'll be able to abuse the passive Rapid Spin from the Hitmontop. Forgot about the taunt, if I'm perfectly honest here. I mean, I didn't know if he would necessarily stay in because I could have just predicted the taunt and gone for, like, the Stone Edge. Um... So I don't know. I, I didn't know as he'd necessarily go for that. It was a weird kind of 50-50 where I just actually forgot about the taunt. So just went for the Stealth Rocks regardless. Uh, I think I would have made that play every time, even if I'd remembered the taunt. Here, I'm just going to Earthquake because I don't want to let the hit on top in for free. It is a threat to my team. And because he is going to be able to parting shot, it's not like I can pull a double into something any better than Tyranitar. Like, I'm just in the situation where his doubles are bloody annoying and there's not much I can do about it. So, ra uh, oh, sorry, his parting shot momentum is bloody annoying. There's not much I can do about it. So, rather than that, I'm just going to Earthquake and get some chip off on the hit on top. If it's AV, like I suspect, it can't really recover that up without the floor just wish passing. And the floor just is so low. Uh, and my team, like, everything on my team outspeeds floor just. So we've got enough speed on pretty much everything. That was the other reason that we had speed on this Tyranitar and stuff is like everything's going to ask me the floor just so I don't see him ever getting the floor just back in and wishing um, so if he is AV he's got no recovery so that's why I felt like the earthquake was a worthwhile play here I'm just going to go into Jean uh, I, I like thought this thing probably got knockoff and that would suck losing our scarf but at the same time it was best just to get an intimidate off on this thing and get something in that's not going to take much damage from like a close combat or something like that as he actually reveals the Seismic Toss, um, which is, is pretty nice tech, because with the Sand Chip plus that, that actually does, like, what, 45% so this? That's quite a lot, so... Uh, here I'm going to raw HP ground, because I know he has to preserve this thing for my Tyranitar, and I'm going to predict him going into, into this thing. But it's on a balloon! God damn it, it's on a balloon! Um, so, unfortunately, I hit a power ground, doesn't touch this thing, and I was like, damn, that's, that's some nice prep, that's some nice prep. Um, really sucks, because that would have been, like... That would have been the cherry on the cake, or the icing on the cake, or whatever you want to say. Because, like, with this thing chipped down as well, like, Shaman's looking so good. So I was like, ah, oh, fuck, that's, that's not ideal. And now I realize that actually breaking this Heatran is going to be really difficult for my team. Like, I don't have the best ways to break this Heatran. I don't really bait it in with anything other than Gardevoir. And Gardevoir at the minute can't touch it, so I'm probably going to have to Moonblast into it at some point just to break its balloon, then come back in with Gardevoir later, and then hit him back around. It's going to be a whole thing, so... Basically, any opportunity I get, it might have to be with the scissor. I've just got to try and get the Heatran in and break its uh, balloon. So, here he goes for the Toxic with the Persian after we've defogged to get rid of those rocks. He actually misses his Toxic as we crit the Volt Switch. Um, I was kind of, like, good at this point in the battle because I wanted to get my Gardevoir in there to click Moonblast. We guaranteed to outspeed that thing so that he had to give me his air balloon on the Heatran. So that's why I actually go out with Scissor here, I, but fully, like, I apologise to him, it was still hacked, you know, I still missed the Toxic, I still crit his damn Persian, so for sure, like, that sucked for him. But here I'm just gonna go into my Scissor so that I can bait in the Heatran. Um, I don't know why I didn't just Bullet Punch, because this, like, this, this might have been a roll, this really might have been a roll. I don't know why I didn't just Bullet Punch, I was like, ah, I'll outspeed him in U-turn, I, I didn't speed the creep, speed creep a Heatran with my Scissor, I thought I had, and I hadn't, like a slow Heatran, but... Just a complete oversight by me, so that one I definitely, like, if that was a damage roll, I definitely looked out a little bit there, for sure. Uh, but we do break his balloon anyway. Like I said, I should have just bullet punched, because all I wanted to do was break his balloon. That was all I wanted. Um, but ah, it is what it is. I thought I could get a fast U-turn, break his balloon, and go into uh, and uh, into um, Tyranitar, but unfortunately I couldn't. Obviously, I'm going to predict the um, Hitmontop to come back out here. I don't think the Heatran will ever stay in, uh, so I'm just going to try and get my rocks up. Yes, if he'd flash cannon, that would have been great, but um, I do probably outspeed him with my Tyranitar, because like I said, I'm a super speedy Tyranitar, so he'd have to be a pretty fast Heatran to outspeed me. Um, and we are just going to be able to just get a little bit of Sand Chip off on this thing as well, get rocks up, and like I said, now we can kind of force that passive play I was talking about, so we're just going to actually go for the Toxic here, because that way... If he goes for the Rapid Spin, we're really chipping this thing down. Between Poison Damage, Sand Damage, uh, we're really putting this thing on a timer. Uh, and here I was like, okay, what do I value more? I could go into Gardevoir here on a potential like close combat or whatever. Uh, but actually, I think I just want to spam Rocks. Because we've seen this thing as Intimidate, I don't think it's got priority. I don't think it's because it's not Technician. So I was like, I think I can just spam Rocks here. And basically, I want to keep my Rocks up for that Gyarados in case it's like Sash Gyarados or something like that. 
uh, but he does reveal to have the muck punch and this was again just a bit of an oversight by me uh, where I just didn't think he would have it I was like I didn't think he's got it he does have it especially with seismic toss and stuff I was like what's he gonna have like seismic toss toxic uh, rapid spin and then like CC or something right he's got to have like some kind of close combat to hit me with so here I'm gonna go into red because basically we can bullet punch this thing um, he can't muck punch us uh, and out prioritizers and he actually goes for the rapid spin and I was like hmm What's going on here? Uh, had he gone into the Heatran there, it wouldn't have been the end of the world. Because uh, I've already put this thing, like, chipped down as low as I wanted it to. And if I could have sacked Scissor to the heat, uh, to Heatran, I could have got Kieran Black in to start breaking again. So that was my kind of thinking there in the long game. Like, turns ahead why I did that. Um, but he actually just, like I say, sacks himself to Rapid Spin. Which I was like, that's really weird. And then I was like, oh, that's why. He wants to set up with his Gyarados on me. Because he knows that I can't really touch him. So here I'm just going to go for the U-turn. Because I'm not going to risk like knocking off or anything like that. And letting this thing start dragon dancing up. Uh, as he actually reveals to be sub. And I was like, okay, well he's not sash. So that's something. That was the other reason that I wanted to really U-turn there. Was to make sure that I broke his sash. If he had one. Um, and I'm like, okay, I actually don't mind that I didn't get rocks up. Because that was all I wanted rocks for. Was for 25% on the Gyarados. So here we can just go for discharge. Uh, and like I said, I'm a very, very fast um, Rotom Wash. So that I can outspeed this Gyarados. As he just goes here for the uh, Waterfall. And I'm guessing he thought he would probably outspeed me. And if he did have a Z move, he was just trying to chip me into Z move range. Um, which makes perfect sense. He didn't want me like doubling out to scout the Z move or something like that. Um, but because we are a speedy set, we are able to just discharge and break his sub. Here I'm going to go for the Volt Switch. Uh, it's a no drawback play. If El Tigre comes in, which it does. It's already a full health. I, I don't care that it gets recovery because it doesn't have anything to recover. Uh, so I'm actually just going to stay in Hydro Pump here. Fearing that uh, he might predict my um, Gardevoir coming in to take the Plasma Fist with the Trace. Uh, which is exactly what I think he did do there with the knockoff. So now, just, just to make sure it doesn't happen again. And because I do want to keep some health on my Rotom. Because I do think it's useful in the end game against Heatran. I'm actually going to go into Scissor. And I kind of wish I had made the play that I was considering. Which was now going into Gardevoir on him. But it just wasn't worth risking my Gardevoir. When I had a one health Scissor that I could just sack. That did like nothing to anything else on his team. It was completely useless against the rest of his team. So... Instead, what that gives me is Hodgehog for free, uh, because what that Hydro Pump told me with my um, Rotom Wash is that he's actually AV. Uh, here he goes for the knockoff, which I thought was a pretty good chance of going for. Um, I don't know if he had Fire Punch at this point in the battle, but I, I figured that he, he probably didn't. And Fire Punch actually probably won't Oko me any... Or definitely won't Oko me, but unless he's Z, which he can't be because he's a Soul Vest, it would never Oko me. So I was like, okay, I now know that I can set up on this thing. I can go for my Tailwind. So we're able to Tailwind and Earth Power. I did consider just uh, clicking my Z there, but because he still has a floor just to sack in the back, I was like, it's just better to Earth Power. Here he does go into floor just as I earth power once again. Because at some point I'm like he has to sack the floor just to me to try and stall out my tailwind. I'm sure. I'm sure he has to at some point. So the floor just does go down here. And I believe we just have one turn of tailwind left as he sends out the Gyarados. And he's seen so far that we have earth power, tailwind and that's it. So we probably, and he knows that we're Z. So we could be grounding him Z. It does look uh, fairly good against his team. Uh, so with that in mind he might think that his Gyarados is safe. I am going to pop my Z now. If he'd gone into Heatran I would have looked like a fool. Um, but then he would have been in a difficult position because I still would have outsped him and been able to earth power him the next turn. And then I still would have outsped this Gyarados when it came back in. So he, he just couldn't really pivot around me that well here. Where I feel like I can just force a KO uh, with my Bloom Doom. Otherwise he's just going to have to keep switch, 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 switch until he sacks something. Um, so the Gyarados has to take this huge Bloom Doom and it does pick up the KO. So Hodgehead going in here, taking massive uh, damage on the Zero Aura, KOing the Florges and KOing the uh, Gyarados. So this set worked out every bit as well as I would have hoped. Here we're going to go for the Tailwind because I don't think this Fire Punch will kill. I couldn't quite remember the damage roll last time, but I'm pretty sure we'll take it and be able to Tailwind again. Unfortunately, he does crit me and KO me. It's fine. At this point in the battle, uh, excusing for crits, uh, Shaman Hodgehead has done its job. We should have this pretty wrapped up. Here I can go into my Gardevoir. We do guarantee to outspeed this thing with the Volt Absorb as well. He can't Plasma Fist me. The best he can do is like knock off whatever which shouldn't KO me. So we can go for the Hidden Power Ground and even if we don't KO, uh, we should be, should be okay. But we do pick up the KO with the Hidden Power Ground which is really, really nice. Heatran now has to come in and... Because of that scissors stuff earlier, we did manage to break his balloon, so he now isn't immune to my hidden power ground. And we did still have Rotom Wash in the back to uh, Hydro Pump as well, so that was pretty nice. So we still had some Wincons in the back, and we still had the uh, Kieran Black to be able to Earth Power. So as he just goes for the Iron Head here and KOs me, uh, which I think is why we lived with the Lava Plume earlier, because potentially he was a mixed or physical set, which I think is why Scissor took the Lava Plume. Just a huge misplay by me earlier on in the game for sure. Uh, but this does give us our Kieran Black now to finish off the game. The reason I went into this instead of uh, the 
uh, wrote on Wash first is that if this thing does outspeed him, which it hopefully will do, Earth Power is guaranteed to KO him where uh, Hydro Pump could miss, and I don't want to just, you know, don't want to throw away differential if I don't have to. So. There we go, GG to my man, it's whatever. Uh, we do manage to pick up the 2-0 win here, getting us back to winning ways and breaking us even with that 3-3 record, which was hugely, hugely important for me. Uh, Shaman just went crazy in this match. Shaman literally just decided it was gonna go in. I don't know what is going on here. Oh, I'm showing you uh, various things. Who cares? Uh, we managed to, uh, yeah, we managed to go 3-3 here, picking up a really nice win. So super, super happy with that. Uh, like I say, GG to my opponent. Shaman went crazy. Gardevoir could have done more, but he brought Air Balloon, which was really good prep. And I do apologize for the toxic into crit, or toxic miss into crit, um, but and maybe the roll on the scissor as well. We definitely got some luck in this game. That being said, the way our luck has been this season in the APA, I am I'm not going to complain. I feel like we have not had the rub of the green the rest of the season, so I'm really, really happy to get it this time. Regardless, next week we take on Lynx Forte and his South Florida Bulus, a content creator that I really admire, actually, who I think is a brilliant uh, YouTuber. I don't believe he's uploading his APA season, unfortunately, but regardless, it's going to be really fun to go up against him. Hopefully, we can try and go with a positive record. As I say, I'm taking a week break from Mons and stuff, so uh, God knows what mindset I'll be in when I come back, but we'll, we'll wait and see. Uh, thank you to you guys for all your support so far this season. Hopefully, like I said, we can go positive next week and pick up some momentum going into the last uh, sort of six weeks of this season. We are now exactly at the halfway point with an even record it's not ideal but we have faced the two top two teams in the league already so there's that uh, and we have had some some bad luck and now finding some good luck it is what it is i guess i'm rambling on thank you so much for looking around with me and i'll catch you again next time